Hi, I'm Christian Triola, author of The Missing Method for Guitar Books. And in this, Reading the Riff number four, we're going to take a look at one of the most popular riffs to play on guitar, Smoke on the Water by Deep Purple. So before we get into it, make sure you download the PDF on it. It's going to give you several different ways of approaching reading this riff because it's so simple, it can be played a lot of different ways. So I tried to cover a few of them in that PDF. So Smoke on the Water is one of those riffs that you learn how to play on guitar whether you like the song or not. It's just fun to play. Even if you don't listen to a lot of classic rock or a lot of Deep Purple, you're going to learn this riff at some point. Um, if anything, to teach it to somebody else who wants to learn how to play guitar. So in this reading the riff, we're going to actually do something a little bit different from what we've done before. And that is talk about why this particular riff is learned by so many guitar players. And the number one reason, as I'm sure you could figure out on your own, is that it's simple. There's not a lot to it, and yet it sounds really good. It sounds like you know what you're doing right away. In fact, one story I heard about the writing of this song is that Deep Purple's guitar player, and he was listening to Beethoven, and he heard Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, which is that... And he was thinking, well, that's just two notes, and yet it's so recognizable. Instead of coming up with some complicated riff that we should play through, let's do something as simple as possible and make it sound as good as possible. So that's exactly what they did. They took the pentatonic scale, which of course is the scale that defines rock music in a lot of ways, and then applied this idea of simplicity and came up with this riff. And even though it is simple, um, there's a lot to it that you can still learn. It helps new students become familiar with the fretboard because one of the things that's confusing is you look down to try to find a note and there's just all these frets, there's dots, there's all sorts of things to look at. So it helps you to focus your eye because you are uh, practicing just grabbing two strings right in the middle. It's also helping you to find the frets by using the fret markers that almost all guitars have. Most of them you'll find on frets 3, 5, 7, 9, and then 12. And so it kind of gets you acquainted with those fret markers. It also teaches you inverted power chords, which are actually pretty easy to play. And an inverted power chord is simply a power chord, but the root of the chord is on top rather than on the bottom. Usually, for example, uh, if you were playing, let's say, a G5 power chord, you would play it right here on the last string, starting with the third fret. However, in Smoke on the Water, they play the G5 power chord like that by playing just the two notes that are in the middle of the guitar, the G and the D. It also gives students a chance to get acquainted with offbeat rhythms because even though the first three beats are right on the beat, one, two, three, the next three are all offbeats, and, and, and three. And so it helps you kind of get that feel so you're not just playing on the beat all the time. So it's kind of useful in that regard. It kind of helps build a point of reference for future playing. It also gives you a lot of freedom to play it in different spots on the neck, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. So let's get into reading Smoke on the Water. Now, on the PDF, there is one version that is simply notation, so it doesn't show you where to play it. So it's up to you to kind of figure out how to play this. Now, throughout the entire song, you're playing inverted power chords. So you have two notes the whole way through, and the first note is always on the third string, and the second note is always on the fourth string, at least with one way of playing it. Or they're always going to be paired together like that in some way. So when first learning Smoke on the Water, a lot of times you'll learn it one of two ways. So the first way is to play it like we were talking about before. First chord is simply the middle two strings played together. Then the next one is those same two strings at the third fret. And so there's two ways you can finger that, either one with one finger going across two strings or you can use two fingers, one on each string. And both ways will work. There's really not a wrong way here. So you have open, third, five. And if you notice, I switched to my third finger 
you don't have to. You can just use one finger the whole time. So you can do zero, three, five, just like that. The next thing you want to watch out for are those off beats. But if you know how the song's supposed to sound, those are really easy to do. So we have So we're playing on and off the beat that whole time. Now as we go through reading this riff, you can see that for this version, which is the traditional way of playing it, it's not the way they recorded it, but it's how a lot of people play it because it's the easiest way to play it. Uh, we're just sticking to the middle two strings. We start on the open strings, third fret, fifth. Eventually we make our way up to the sixth, and that's it. That's the whole thing, and that just repeats. So I'm gonna go through it in this way one more time. So we have zero, three, five, zero, three, six, five, zero, three, five, three, zero. All right, but that's not the only way to do it. In fact, the original recording, they're using their fingers instead of a pick to play it. And the first chord isn't played as open strings. Now, if you've gone through missing method one, you'll recognize those notes, the D and the G, as being playable with open strings. Now, if you've moved on to missing method two, you can move up here because now we can play the G at the fifth fret of the fourth string and the D note on the fifth fret of the fifth string. So I'm gonna put my pick down here and show you how they played Smoke on the Water in the actual recording. So they start on the fifth fret, here we go. And you can kind of hear the difference there in sound by using the fingers and by playing it up in this register. We're no longer playing those harsh open strings. We now have a little more control over that sound. And so as you're reading up the neck or learning to read up the neck, you can then relate what you've done here to what you're doing here. Same chords, same sound, slightly different timbre. So, Let's go ahead and move on to yet another way you can learn how to play Smoke on the Water. All right, so the last way that you can learn how to play it is a way a lot of teachers will teach young students how to play it because their fingers aren't coordinated yet to push down two strings at a time. Also, it can be difficult at first to strum just those two strings. So what I recommend if you do have that trouble is that your pick actually lands on the second string. So that way you have a nice follow through and it allows you to play through that easily. All right, so let's get to the third way of doing it. So what you can do is you can take any single string, follow the pattern of 0350365 that we did on the original uh, version there a few moments ago and you have the song. So I'm gonna play it on the last string, much like it shows you in the tab that's in the PDF, and it sounds like this. So it's not exactly like the recording, but you can hear it smoke on the water. And so it's another way of practicing reading notes as well, because you're just reading single notes here and you're reading some of the lowest single notes. So you could actually play it down here. And that totally breaks the pattern that we've been doing so far, yet it works. And so another thing you can do with that is change that to any string at all. Let's say you wanted to do it on the fifth string, just zero, three, five. And a lot of young students will do that. They'll realize, hey, if I can play it here, I can play this all over the place. And it kind of opens up your ear to hearing 
different keys, because that's what you're doing essentially is changing keys as you're playing it. All right, so we've covered several different ways that you can play Smoke on the Water. Hopefully, if you've already learned it, you can kind of take the PDF and learn how to read it. Uh, there are a lot of different ways you can do that. I have the tabs written out, but you don't have to follow those necessarily. Just take a look at the notes and figure out how to play it as many different ways as you can. All right, so that's all we've got for reading the riff number four. If you need help with note reading, don't forget about the Missing Method for Guitar note reading series that'll help you out. It shows you how to read all the notes in open position. Book two, of course, teaches you how to read all the notes in the middle of the neck. And book three teaches you how to play the notes in a higher register. And it just keeps going up. There's five books total, and you can go as far into it as you'd like. It also covers all 12 keys. So you'll be changing keys and understanding what that means. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I always appreciate it when people do that. And also make sure you check out themissingmethod.com. You can go there. You'll get a free ebook if you sign up for our mailing list. So until next time, keep practicing.